so sweet. I do love a warm hand on my entrance. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Hedwig and please welcome the Angry Inch. <laughs> and of course my, my husband and man Friday through Thursday gets up. There's no need for that this night. Oh well look at all of you. My goodness I, I am so thrilled you could all join me for this very special one night only performance here at the beautiful Belasco Theatre. You know when it comes to huge openings, a lot of people think of me. <laughs> me the courtesy tonight of Mr. Where are you, baby? Where? Mr. Bob Van Bob Vankel of the Schubert Organization. On bended knee did I beg Bob for my Broadway debut. <laughs> he told me not to talk with my mouth full. <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm moved. I'm moved. I'm moved by the simple fact that this, this crawling abridged corpus you see before you, it, it is presently being supported by the same groaning planks that once created Brando's debut and, uh, and Barry Moore's farewell, where Bogey cracked wise and where, where Tim Curry batted his eyes, where <laughs> Kathy Griffin tried to win a Tony. <laughs> oh, there's so much history here, you can just taste it. Oh. <laughs> oh no, that, that, that tastes like John Cameron Mitchell. <laughs> it tastes filthy and a bit aged, really. <laughs> oh no, no, you think it's going to go away, but no, it, uh, it comes back later. <laughs> and it's not as good as it used to be. <laughs> Imagine me, look at me. Imagine me in the birthplace of of Awake and Sing for all of you group theatre fans. And of course the birthplace of A Raisin in the Sun for all of you P. Diddy fans. <laughs> and most recently, of course, the explosive Hurt Locker, the musical. <laughs> it was a rock opera. And I ran to the box office, but, but it opened 
last night in closed intermission, which is such a shame. You think the critics quit. <laughs> but Bob let us have the set for one more night before they strike it. So once again, thank you, Bob. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, think of me as, um, as a theatrical hermit crab that's just wriggled into its new shell. How does it look on me? I wasn't clear with my question. How does it look on me? Stop, stop it. You legitimize me, ladies and gentlemen. You really do. But, but let's be honest, shall we? Many of you here tonight have only recently become aware of me. It took a tragedy for you to finally pay attention. Ah, but now you're interested in intrigued. Even. <laughs> uh, so, like, who is this headache and how come we've never heard of her before? Jerry? <laughs> well, that is a question I have been asking myself for years. How did some slip of a girly boy from communist East Berlin become the internationally ignored song stylist you see barely standing before you? <laughs> that is what I want to talk about tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not here to talk about calamity or, or scandal. I'm not here to talk about my relationship with a certain well-known rock icon, Tommy Noses. <laughs> Even though, at this very moment, by some freak coincidence, with no prime out on my part, or on my people's part, tonight he is launching his Tour of Atonement just a block away in Times Square. Yes. Driving. He was on blow. He was getting blown by yours truly, and he did hit the school bus full of deaf children. One survived, now blind. <laughs> yes, I taught him everything he knows, and has apparently forgotten about rock and roll. And barely mentions my name on that giant sucking sound Anderson Cooper calls a show, which I'm sure you all saw because if you hadn't. I'd be singing to the coat check, and if I was lucky, maybe to James Franco in the back with a handicap. All of the privileges of homosexuality, and none of the responsibilities. <laughs> I'm sorry for that, ladies and gentlemen. I had a, I had a mood thing. Well, well, I am wide open tonight. Yes, you are all looking at a locker. Full of hurt. <laughs> you see, ladies and gentlemen, the road is my home. My home, the road. And when I think of all the people I have come upon in my travels, I have to think of all the people who have come upon me. I know, really, ladies and gentlemen, it's. Um, it's the geography of human content. The, the triangulation of a pair of eyes on my face, the, the latitude and longitude of a hand on my body. These are the only clues I have to my place in the world, to, to who I am. Who is mystery woman? I laugh because I will cry if I don't. I recently found my first diary, ages two through six, fully illustrated. <laughs> and I realized that so many people have touched me on my way to this stage tonight. <laughs> How can I say who touched me the most? My father, the American GI who left before I was barely old enough to speak my first words. Daddy, 
when I grow up, I'll kill you. <laughs> or could it have been my East German mother? No. No, when she touched me, it was usually by accident. Well, except for one time, we were watching Jesus Christ Superstar on American Forces television. I turned to mother. Jesus said the darndest things. She slapped me. Don't you ever mention that name to me again. <laughs> uh, but he, he, he died for our sins. So did Hitler. <laughs> My son. Well, when the wall went up, her wish came true. We happened to be living on the east side, and mother was given a job teaching sculpture to limbless children. <laughs> yes, socialism. <laughs> God rest its soul. Most of my time I spent listening to American Forces radio. Oh, yeah. You have no idea how important you used to be. <laughs> how important it was so small that mother made me play it in the oven. Late at night, I would rest my head on the top rack and I would listen to the American masters. Tony Tillieve, Debbie Boone, Anne Murray, who was actually a Canadian working in the American idiom. <laughs> Uh, of course, there were the crypto homo rockers, Lou Reed, Eddie Pop, David Bowie, who was actually an idiot working in America and Canada. <laughs> These artists, they left as deep an impression on me as that Uffin Rack did on my face. <laughs> oh, to be a young American in muskrat love, soft as me. Chair. Not even the chair. I am, I said, have I never been mellow? Have I never tried? And all the colored girls say, But never with the melody. But how could I do it better than Tony or Lou? Once I couldn't resist. It can't be wrong when it feels so mother threw a tomato at my head. <laughs> but I was quite content to sing gentle back and harmonies in my oven while mother sculpted in the shower. But when the hour grew late and it was time for bed, mother would shout from the bathroom, Well, that's me! And I would reply from the kitchen, and to brush our teeth and wash our feet and lay down on the narrow pallet we had shared since Daddy left. Like uh, two pieces of a puzzle that don't quite fit but are uh, jammed together and left on a table by some dangerous shut-in with too much time on his hands. Oh, I'm sorry, I think I just broke the fifth wall. <laughs> it's you. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm completely dilated right now. <laughs> I'd like to share with all of you a bedtime story that Mother once whispered to me in the dark and later retracted. Oh, whatever allowed her to reveal such a story to such a little boy, I'll never know, but I remember it like it happened yesterday. The earth was still flat, and clouds lay of fire, and mountains stretched up to the sky, sometimes higher. Like big rolling cakes, they had to settle out. They had to settle legs, they had to face his peer out of one giant head so they could walk. 
Watch all around them as they talked while they read And they never knew nothing of love Which was before The origin of love And there were three sexes there One that looked like two men who would unpack to them Call the children of the sun And similar in shape and girth Were the children of the earth They looked like two girls rolled up in one And the children of the moon Was like a fork shot down a spoon Gods grew quite scared of our strength and defiance and force it. I'm gonna kill them all with my hammer, like I kill the giants. But Zeus said, No, you better let me use my lightning like scissors, like I cut the legs off the waves. Dinosaurs and tell lizards, then he grabbed up some bolts. He lay down a lap, said, I'll stay on right down the Gonna cut him right up in half And then stormed out And gathered above Into great balls of fire Fire, 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 fire And then fire Shot down From the sky in bolts Like shining blades of night And it rests Right through Good scrim job, don't you? 
just up and down, big finish, lots of passion, I love it. But after Mother finished her story, she began to snore, but well, I had to go somewhere I could think. So I crept into the kitchen, and I put my head in the oven. Well, it is clear that I must find my other half. But is it a he or a she? Is it Daddy? He went to her. Or Mother? Oh, I, I was suddenly very afraid to go back to bed. What does this person look like? Identical to me or somehow complimentary? Does my other half have what I don't? Did he get the looks, the, the luck, the love? Were we really separated forcibly, or did he just run off with the good stuff? Or did I? Will this person embarrass me? Sex. Is that how we put ourselves back together again? Is that what Daddy was trying to do? Or, or can two people actually become one again? And if we're driving on the outbound when it happens, can we still use the diamond leg? <laughs> Practical questions of wholeness of completion. Think of it. I thought of it. I thought of the power of the gods would be terrified. I am pouring my heart out over here, and you are masturbating with acrylic hair! <laughs> oh shit, it's up. Look, immigration! Shit, everybody run, go! It's immigration! <laughs> oh, it's fine, I love that one. <laughs> it really brings everything into focus, doesn't it? Maybe if you behave yourself, I just, just might let like to shave my back later yeah. as a reward. <laughs> Not in front of everyone, only, but I mean, behave yourself. So sit down, don't make catch you doing that again. Be a good boy. <laughs> oh, well, I'm, I'm, I do apologize that you have to see that, ladies and gentlemen, we're having a little moment. You know what? Let's bring it up a bit, shall we? Let's pep it up. I have a funny story for you. When I met him, you know what he said? He said he wanted to be a model. Well, a foot model, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck was that, Ringo? It wasn't. I could feel stretch marks developing from how pregnant that pause was from the pastor. It was so late it had an agenda. <laughs> As soon as that was happening, you're taking sides. Let me remind all of you that there are no sides to take when one has no passport. <laughs> How's my hair, ladies and gentlemen? Do you know I would say it's effortless. That's what I would say. Effortless. Any words of wisdom from this crowd today? Any suggestions? I heard fox here like that. I could fit two foxes in here. This is one foxhole, that's another foxhole. You could feed them in there. What is that? a fox here like that. What? Ooh, what was that? Someone said something. Like a tiny hat. This is nothing tiny about it. I must be confused. Depth perception, probably. What? Somebody said something very interesting. I like it. It's our fleet, baby. It's on a copy of the it's on fleek, it's on methamphetamines, it's on a lot of things. It's on a few different things. Thank you, Diane, thank you for noticing. No, I had something very interesting. You know, what? I, I, you know what, a lot of you are thinking people, which I do appreciate, and I don't want to stifle your thoughts, but I do want to sort of catalyze your thinking process. So I, somebody said something very interesting. Did you, was it morally ambiguous? Is that what you said? Morally ambiguous. I have a college student here. I like to go with that. You know why I like that? Because you, you do have to, to think and wonder whose, whose hair it was originally, you know? <laughs> Certainly not yours, sir. So. <laughs> no, I like to think of it as, um, as some single Sri Lankan mother of ten. 
roll it out, bleach it, chop it off, have another kid, you know. Oh, come on, it's a global economy. <laughs> Don't give me that look, Mr. Vegan in a leather jacket. Look, I've got the right to feel nothing. I had my heart removed to fit into this fucking dress. Look at me, I'm a perfect sample size. So I realized there was only one person who had ever really been there for me in my life. And that person was me. The accident was a cry for help. I was yelling help to me. Well, well, what about me, huh? Without me, he would have never swerved into that oncoming short bus and revived his moribund career with a well-timed redemption tale. <laughs> well, gang ought to be damned! It all went down in the newly annoying meat packing district. <laughs> oh, oh yes, some of you know the place. But I had just been barred from entering the Jane Hotel. Apparently, I'd left my douche idea at home. <laughs> <laughs> a limousine pulled up. So I hopped in, naturally mistaking it as my own. And as I got inside, I <laughs> Oh, did I not forget to tell you before the show, I would cut a bitch. <laughs> but that goes for some of you here tonight as well. <laughs> <laughs> How much is it talking about? Oh yes, the limousine. Yes, inside the limo set. Tommy, no sis. We were both so astonished. It had been years. So we dropped off the driver and drove up and down the island doing drugs and catching up. As you do. <laughs> well, he talked about the disappointing sales of his sophomore album. The one that he wrote without me. The first one went triple platinum. The second barely went pewter. <laughs> he spoke of his loneliness. I reminded him of happier days, but I couldn't keep my mouth shut. <laughs> but you know the rest, you don't need to demonstrate. But when the story broke, when it broke, I heard nothing from him. Nothing! And all of a sudden, his people appear and offer me a small fortune to keep all of this to myself. It's as if I'd accept that filthy Luca. As if selling a tabloid story of someone else's pain was my only means of support. As, as if I hadn't already launched my new fragrance atrocity by Hedwig. <laughs> Thank you, it's very exciting. It's, it's a fragrance for a man or a woman. Or a, or a man woman or a, a woman man. Yes, or a, or a moment. Or, or a wham. <laughs> and, and whatever the fuck you are, darling. So <laughs> I, I digress. One day, in the late mid 80s, I was in my early late 20s. <laughs> I had just been dismissed from university after delivering a brilliant lecture on the aggressive influence of German philosophy on rock and roll, entitled You can't always get what you want, but if you try sometimes, you just might find you get what you need. <laughs> 26, my academic career was over. I had never kissed a boy, and I was still sleeping with mom. The search for my other half on this side of the wall had proved futile. Might he be found on the other? But how to get over? People died trying. People made balloons of the grandparents' skin to get over. <laughs> Such were the thoughts flooding my tiny head on the day that I was sunning myself in an old bomb crater I had discovered through the wall. I am naked, lying face down on a piece of broken church, inhaling a fragrant westerly breeze. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> of the new McDonald's that just opened up at the sound. <laughs> Good God, I deserve a break today. <laughs> well, the sun is hot, but I, I feel a sudden chill. I look over my shoulder. 
A head-shaped shadow is resting on the pillow of my ass. <laughs> Girl, I sure don't mean to annoy you, but my name's Sergeant Luther Robinson. I turn my body to face him. <laughs> my name is Hansel. Luther is silent for a moment as he stares at my little bishop in a turtleneck. <laughs> Well, you must like candy. I like gummy bearchen. Out of his pocket comes a strange American-looking packet that says gummy bears on it. Gummy bears. I select a single clear bear. It is the biggest one I have ever seen. Hmm. Oh, well, the taste is completely different from a gummy bear, and, uh, and, and softer too. It's much, it's much sweeter than a gummy bear. I could feel the, I could feel the little gummy body stretching on the rack of my molars. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Wow! I feel so optimistic. He pours me a handful. His eyes heavy with an unfamiliar desire. Could it be a desire to please? Me? I suddenly recognize the flavor in my mouth. Mm. It is the taste of power. <laughs> and it's not bad. <laughs> Damn, Hansel, I can't believe you're not a girl. You're so fine. Why don't you take the whole bag? He searches my face for news of his fate. His expression is echoed in scores of tiny faces pressing against clear plastic, the panting faces of every imaginable color and creed and non-Aryan origin fogging up the bag like windows of a Polish bathhouse. Oh, wait, it's only a shower. Oh, it's absolute power. I push Luther away and stumble naked through the ruins back towards bladderless, complicated confections, leaving in my wake a trail of rainbow colors. Well, the next day, Hansel follows the trail back and lying on my slab are three Milky Ways, a, a roll of Neko wafers, some pop rocks, and a giant sized sugar daddy named Luther. Take it, 
we can keep you nice and clean. In a velvet dress with heels and a robot style. Oh, Luther, darling, heaven knows I've never put on women's clothes <laughs> except for once my mother's camisole. Sugar Daddy. <laughs> My goodness, you're gonna make me a diabetic. There's so much sugar in this audience tonight. Michael, look at you, darling. You're having a heart attack. You've had so much sugar. This is not the first time your face has been covered in glittery hooker makeup, is it? <laughs> if you permit me, I'm, I'm a bit curious. I'm gonna do a little bit of a test. <laughs> she didn't bat an eyelash. She's used to things just extending right in front of her face. <laughs> darling, you you're a party animal. You're the, you're the leader of this pack. What's your name, darling? Nelly. Nelly the Nelly just got <laughs> filled with. I don't know. I don't have a thing for that. I'm just looking at your face, and the punchline is there. <laughs> Forgive me if you can't see it. It looks like a bit of a like a Pollock painting, except if you had, you know, there's no joke in there. I'm just staring at your face. It looks hilarious. I'm sorry if you can't see it. <laughs> Maybe next time if you're up here, it might happen to you. Baby, Nelly, darling, what, what are you doing after the show? I'd love to squeeze you into my tight little agenda. <laughs> so it's, we can squeeze people in there now. It's, the whole person can actually go inside. So you can ask some of the boys. It, it's possible. We have the technology. <laughs> yeah, so what, what does my tomorrow look like? I believe I have a number, a number of appointments. And an even greater number of disappointments, really, let's be honest. <laughs> Nearly, you know what? If you're lucky, maybe tomorrow would be my first disappointment. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, enough of the fibs, huh? Why, why don't we take, let's take it down enough to be very serious. I'd like to talk about something that's near and dear to my heart. There comes a time when everyone's... <laughs> Millie, did, is this, did you put that there? <laughs> what is happening with this? We can't clean a stage before I get it. It's like if I wanted to see a mess on a Broadway stage, I would have seen Finding Neverland or something. <laughs> Oh, ladies and gentlemen, it's composed by Stephen Schwartz. <laughs> oh, come on, how good can it be? It's the love theme from The Hurt Locker. Schwartz love got to do with it, that's what I always say. Oh, is there something you'd like to say, darling? Oh, is there something you'd like to sing? 
okay, you can take a moment, but just a moment, that's all you get. Just a moment, enough time for me to get this Millie baby out of my mouth. I need to abort it over here. But you, you know what makes it him? It's good for him to know what it's like to embarrass himself in a Broadway crowd. It, it builds character, it's good for him. Go ahead, darling, go ahead and find your, your cornrow of the sky. <laughs> Oh, oh, don't worry, darling, you'll be flat. <laughs> is much better at <laughs> Sit down, darling. Sit down. Of course, for some of you. What were we talking about before that little disaster? Please. Oh, yes, how could I forget if I may remind you? We were talking about me! <laughs> Thank you, some of you. That was completely unsolicited and spontaneous. I appreciate it. No, really. Let's be excited about something. Luther, come on, back to Luther. Luther and I got married. Yes, it's very exciting. Oh, but it was not a traditional wedding. No, for example, when Luther and I popped the question, or Luther popped the question to me, well, I was on my knees. Ah. Yes, he's back, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. <laughs> Next day, I invited Luther home for dinner. After dessert, he produces a ring, an application for an American citizenship, and a wig. He loves me, mother. He wants to marry me and get me the hell out of here. I put the wig on my head. It is a hideous beige shag. Mother, is this pen so crazy that it just might work? Mother's face might have been a photograph, it was so still. <laughs> Get me my passport onto my camera, Hansel. I know a certain party. It's a simple cut and paste job. We change the photo and you can use my name. Hedwig Schmidt. Not so simple, ladies. Oh, baby. You know I love you. I'm always thinking of you. <laughs> but I got to marry you here in East Berlin, and that means a full physical examination. Why, they, they will see right away, baby. Come on now, to, to walk away, you, you got to leave something behind. <laughs> now, right, Mrs. Schmidt. <laughs> I've always thought so, Luther. Hansel, to be free, one must give up a little part of one's head. And I know just the doctor to take it. Don't move! Go! Yeah. <laughs> 
with a breathtaking view over the wall. Herr Hansel Schmidt becomes Mrs. Hedwig Robinson. <laughs> Tomorrow I am leaving on a jet plane and by the time I get to Phoenix, love will keep us together. Because I'm just in embryo with a long, long way to go. But I know too much to go back and pretend. <laughs> Junction City, Kansas. <laughs> I sit in my mobile home <laughs> and on bootleg cable <laughs> watch the wall come down. Divorced any less. A woman. <whistles> oh, I laugh because I will cry if I don't. I consider calling mother in Berlin, but then remember with envy her recent escape to sunny Yugoslavia. <laughs> oh, perhaps Luther will pick up. No, no. No, it had only been a month since he ran off with that bag boy he met on ChristianMingle.com. <laughs> or oh, whatever it is we called it back then. Church! <laughs> uh, well, what am I doing? He was never the one. He was never the missing half. I catch myself in the mirror. And for the third... <laughs> oh. And for the first time, I see clearly the horror hunkering on my head. <laughs> the same carpet remnant Luther presented me with a year ago to disguise my receiving... <laughs> receding... <laughs> I'm receding! I tear the wig from my scalp and I hurl it across the room at a pile of unopened anniversary presents. Well, there it lies. Feigning shock. My personal hair system. My personal hair. My, my head.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What a beautiful people, thank you so much, you're so kind of... Yeah, oh, thank you darling, I'm going to leave that. Oh, well, I think that's pretty good, I think that's our radio hit, don't you? I think we lead with that one. Yes. Good, look, look up Bruno Mars, see who's on top now, or who's on the bottom now. <laughs> Are we having fun? Are we enjoying ourselves? <laughs> I know you're tired. It's very past your bedtime, darling, I know, but bear with me, it will get fun. No, I'd, I'd like to ask you one thing, this, but let me get a sip of water. <laughs> Not to it, ladies and gentlemen, you know what that was? That was a rock and roll gesture, that's here for rock and roll! <laughs> no, I'm sorry, you don't doubt what that was. You got lucky because you put it out in front of this barrier in front of you, but that was meant for you. <laughs> that, that, was, um, that was a heavy, heavy metal gesture. Oh, well, I'll have to do it again. Would you like to see a punk rock gesture? Yeah. Oh He's excited. This concerns all of you, actually. So. <laughs> Give me one second. Back to Broadway, shall we? I know you're Broadway people. Let's, let's do that. How about a five, six, seven, and a wardrobe change, darling? What the fuck is eight? No, it's wardrobe change. Oh, oh, thank you, darling. Look at this. No, I don't, look at this. Don't you like it? I feel like I'm, I'm complete now. I feel like I could be a block away in the Lion Queen. <laughs> Or maybe while I'm here, I could see something rotten, like kinky boots. <laughs> oh, no seriousness, really, no. I, I was so happy to see an act of God, which is that Mamma Mia is finally closing. <laughs> see, this is what I like to call this. This is my Sarah Jessica Parker. <laughs> but it matches perfectly with my Alan Merkin. <laughs> but both actually made of genuine Chris Cole fur. <laughs> it's very hard to get a hold of, but I have a contact. Oh, you know what? You're not going to believe this. Stop there with me. You know, this some, some bitch stopped me on the way in here tonight. You're not going to believe this. She, she came up to me. One poor unfortunate creature had to die for you to wear that. My Aunt Trudy, I repeat. <laughs> How about this band, ladies and gentlemen? Give it up for this band, huh? And this, we have the unflappable Yotsik. And joins the unreliable Shratko. On guitar, the deliciously emo Krzysztof. Uh, the musical director, the completely unpronounceable Sibis Scrisetha Mama, I can't pronounce it. He, he's from a different part of the world than me, he's a different accent. What is it, darling? That, that's what I said. Scrotum or Skittles. Right? It's a mix between Scrotum and Skittles. It's a, it's a, it's a candy over there, it's delicious. Look, what is it, Oh, that's right. You know what? It's the sound of crumbs being swept off the table. <laughs> Parties when everyone's there, everyone's just named different versions of that. Go one more time, darling, in the book. Skitty. You know what? I'd like to buy him a vowel, please. Just one vowel. That's all right. Very much for me. Uh, and I haven't properly introduced my my husband, Mr. Clean, over here yet. So I'm Much is so kind, I appreciate it. No, you think you like him, I know you think you do, but it's really not that interesting. Let me take him back down to earth. Come back here, darling. Let's remind him how we met. 
Now, when I met him, we, we were, what was it, our last Croatian tour together? Oh, he thinks he's a big man now, but just wait till the best part comes. He was the most famous drag queen in Zagreb. Was the most famous drag queen, I'll remind you, in Zagreb. Oh my god, he was so tall. My, my late manager, Phyllis Stein. Oh, may she rest in peace. But Phyllis thought that he would make a great opening act, built as the last Jewess in the Balkans. He lip-synced something from uh, Yentl. <laughs> under the name Crystal Nacht. <laughs> oh, now, hang on, look. Oh, oh, hang on, look. I, I lost an uncle in Auschwitz, okay? Granted, he fell out of a guard tower very tragically. <laughs> we were all victims. All of us were victimized by them. <laughs> Too soon. Look, he was good. He was, not given that. He was too good. His applause drowned out my introduction and I refused to go on. But on my way out, he begged me to take him with me. Begged. Like a dog. Oh, my face might have been my mother's. It was so still. I said to Crystal, to walk away, you, you've got to leave something behind. I'll marry you on the condition that a week never touch your head again. And he agreed. And we have been inseparable ever since. And we will continue to be. As long as he behaves himself. Isn't that right, darling? As long as he behaves himself in front of all these people, now he gets excited. He thinks that these people are not there here to see me. You are just a sideshow. <laughs> Don't you forget to tell you how to behave yourself. Oh shit, it's suck. Look, immigration, everybody run! Go! Go! <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was a bit obvious, but... Oh, look at him, ladies and gentlemen. You've given him the power to learn. Oh, oh hang on. Okay, I was wrong about immigration. I was kidding, okay, in the nature of fun. Boys, why didn't you tell me who was here? Why didn't you tell me she was coming? We've been writing her letters for ages. Darling, I don't want to, to embarrass you, but this is a special night for, for him. If you don't mind, we'd love to get to maybe a selfie, huh? Ladies and gentlemen, the incomparable Barbara Streisand is here tonight at the fourth row. Look, it's Barbara, there she is, darling. She's waving at you. Look, as if! <laughs> <laughs> she was in bed hours ago, as if. Look, I hope you're not having headaches, but as I'm loving you. Oh, okay. I see. So, so you want to know about Tommy Gnosis, huh? I will tell you about Tommy fucking Gnosis. Lord of your blood, you get blood, Lord. Thank you, Tommy. That's what they came for. Get, get this dead thing off of me, Tommy. <laughs> don't want to be the Lion Queen anymore. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> well, after my divorce, I binged on box wine and cheap sex until I finally hit my bottom. He hit me back! <laughs> and I ended up alone in a sod off Winnebago licking the last of the blow off my MacBook Pro. <laughs> but wait, this less. I lay in bed, disasturbating for days and days. <laughs> until I finally decided to throw myself on the job market, which was more than the market could bear. <laughs> or I scraped by with babysitting gigs and odd jobs, and mostly the jobs that we call blow. <laughs> you seem to relate to that one a bit too much. <laughs> but in this crowd will understand. I had lost my job at the base PX, and I had lost my gag reflex. You do the math. <laughs> I sat for the baby of General Speck. He was the commander at the nearby army fort. His other son 
was the artist formerly known as my butt boy, Tommy Speck. Yes, Tommy was a 17-year-old, four-eyed, pockmarked, Dungeons and Dragons obsessed, Jesus freak with a fish on his truck, and I found him incredibly hot. <laughs> oh, well, perhaps, perhaps it was his, his disdain for authority, his, his struggle with organized religion. One day, I walked in on him, punishing the bishop in the bath. <laughs> oh, the, the door was wide open. He was clearly waiting for me. So I, I reached down and I finished his grace. Off. I, and I dropped a flyer in the water. By the way, Tom, I am performing a short set tonight at Dr. Spesso's Seattle style coffee and blah blah. <laughs> Maybe I'll see you there. <laughs> oh, I had just returned to my first love, music. I tried singing once back in Berlin. They threw tomatoes, but after the show I had a nice salad. <laughs> but newly motivated, I bought a cheap electric piano. <laughs> And I found a couple of Korean sergeant's wives who turned out a pretty mean rhythm section. <laughs> uh, we became quite a draw, singing the hits of the day under the name The Angry Inch. Oh, well, that night, I remember the crowd was small but hostile. So, um, so that was yet another one by, uh, by Creed. <laughs> uh, so, so, so how about um, a Quang Yi on guitar, ladies and gentlemen? Give it up, Quang Yi! <laughs> Give it up, Quang Yi! We have ourselves a celebrity here in the audience tonight, ladies and gentlemen. It's, it's little Tommy Speck, the general son. Well, that's more than I got, Tommy. Oh, he's embarrassed. Well, oh, I, I'm a little nervous myself, you know. Um, this is the first song I have ever written. And uh, it's written for a guy to sing. Uh, we have been talking to uh, Nick Jones's people. <laughs> but then again, aren't we all? <laughs> you know the sun is in your eyes. And hurricanes and rain. Oh, you can follow 
Jizz off your face. <laughs> Leave it on. Uh, what does that just play? What does it talk about? Um, oh yes, of course. How could I forget? We were talking about me. <laughs> uh, so the next day I was putting the little speck baby to bed when all of a sudden Tommy appears with an expensive looking electric guitar. Your show? Oh, that song. Oh, my dad gave me this guitar to apologize for being such a pathetic little dictator. <laughs> um, you want to go up to my room? We went up to the attic. He sang me songs, classics. I was at fault. The bands were new to me. Boston, Kansas, Chicago, America, Asia, Europe. I put my hands on his strings. Travel exhausts me. <laughs> where, where are you from, Edward? I told him my story. His face might have been a Yes album cover. It was so skin. <laughs> have you accepted Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as your personal Lord and Savior? <laughs> No, but I love his work. <laughs> well, Jesus loves you. Yes, but he's not in love with you. <laughs> well, you know what he was saving us from, right? He was saving us from his fucking father. I mean, what kind of God creates Adam in his own image and then pulls Eve out of him to keep him company and then tells him not to eat from the tree of knowledge? It's like so micromanaging. <laughs> And so is Adam, but Eve, Eve just wanted to know shit, you know? She took a bite from the apple because she wanted to know what was good and what was evil. And then she gave a bite to Adam so he would know because they were in love, which was a good thing they now knew because of the apple. Hedwig, will you give me the apple? Oh, those words spinning from those lips, and his eyes, his irises were clear cylinders of surprising depth and emptiness. But only a few puddles of bluish pain sloshed around inside, the same blue as my eyes. Now, at the time, Tommy's performance options were limited to the occasional guitar mass. So I initiated a six-month curriculum of rock history, lyrics, grooming, and vocal training. My patented oven technique. <laughs> For his graduation, I gave him his name, Tommy Gnosis. Greek word for knowledge, how we collaborated. Songs exploded out of us. We started singing back for the Dr. Espresso. Teenage girls started showing up. 
<laughs> well, I added a few duets. Standing room only. And then... The Sizzler called! Yes! Game changer! Had the Sizzler ever called anyone ever before? The next thing we knew, we were in the middle of a year-long residency next to the salad bar. Within a matter of months, we were outgrossing monster trucks in Wichita! With that kind of money pouring in, I was able to give up all my other jobs and devote myself entirely to our career. Oh, oh we were very, very happy. One day, I am curled up in the trailer with my usual late afternoon constitutional of grain alcohol and britter. <laughs> oh, come on, I like to be good to myself sometimes. <laughs> When all of a sudden, Tommy is at the door in tears. Honey, what is it? My dad, and my parents, my mom, my family. Well, that's a lot of people, honey. <laughs> I hold him as I have never been held. But as usual, he squirms and slides behind me and clutches my spine to his chest. I, I'm suddenly very much aware that we haven't kissed in all the months we have been together. In fact, he has maintained a near perfect ignorance of the front of me. Oh, darling, why don't, you, why don't you go work on that new song while I finish shaving your eyebrows, okay? <laughs> Look what you've done. Fuck! Another song goes in from the trailer next door. <laughs> this song has been playing on a loop for three days. <laughs> Tommy looks up at me through new lenses. One blue and one pink. What do you think? Does love last forever? No, but this song does. <laughs> Do not mock a multi-platinum single. So I wish I could hit those notes. But just move your lips and I would sing them for you, honey. From a shadowy corner of the stage. Like, like Mick Jagger's backup singer. We laugh at the professional reference. And I returned to his brows. But most of all, I wish you love. Seriously, Tom, yes. I believe love is immortal. Look what you've done. God damn it! Well, well, how is it immortal? Well, perhaps because love creates something that was not there before. What, like procreation? Yes, but not only. Like recreation? He grabs my ass and laughs. I don't. <laughs> and sometimes just... creation. Don't move. Why, I paint a bold silver cross on his forehead. Oh. Oh, honey, have you thought of a, of a C after that D flat? Look what you've done. and draws the curtains that are attached at the top and the bottom. He reaches out his hand. I take it, and I am filled with an ancient clarity. He's the one. There's no blood in my eyes, no blood in his face, and yet he is the one, the, the, the one who was taken, the one who left her, the twin born by fission. He'll die in fusion, our fusion, cold 
confusion, unlimited power, unlimited knowledge, or the secrets that he must share, the memories that we must hold, the, the words to complete the sentence that I began. I am. My eyes fill with muddy Maybelline tears. <laughs> oh, Henry. Oh, God. When Eve was still inside Adam, they were in paradise. And when she was pulled out of it, that's when paradise was lost. So, so when she enters him again, paradise will be regained. However you want to tell me, just kiss me while we do it. I wrench his body around to face mine, and I thrust his hands between my... What is that? <laughs> that is what I have to work with. Uh, uh, my mom, um, she's, she's probably you fucking sissy. What are you afraid of? I, I love you. Then love the front of me. And he runs out the back door.
lights over here. It's nice. I like it. Okay. <laughs> it's out of the spotlight, singing gentle backup harmonies in my outfit. <laughs> You were good. Thank you. The audience is going to give us a little Maybe there's room for, for both of us in the act. Yes, the, the German and the Jew. Oh, think of the publicity. Think, think of the symmetry. Think of the power. The gods would be tough.
Let your blood nose go away. 